you get put on? How did you get discovered? Well, What's your story? My story is one of the longest stories ever. Like I said, I'm official, tissue, like, I... <laughs> for real. My father felt like at one point, wow, I can't be your manager. I had to take care of the rest of the kids. You know what I mean? Mm. I had to provide, make sure y'all eating every day, make sure you got clothes on your back. So it's hard for me to deal with something that I'm not eating from right now. When I say eating, I mean okay. making money. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he not he he wasn't getting bread from the music because, all right, we could sell DVDs and um, like our music mixtapes on the street. But all right, when when will it when will it give? You know what I'm saying? Because we selling them, but then we still giving them out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he found a manager for me, Ali. That was in about 2006. Yeah, 2006, take it or leave it, in the end of 2006. He felt the manager. Mm -hmm. And it was about September, October. I left with Ali to go to Atlanta after two months or something like that of knowing him. Two months, a month and a half. My father put his trust and everything into this guy. Mm -hmm. Like, really. Yeah, because you were young. Right, and he let me go on this trip knowing that I'll be okay or trusting at least that I'll be okay. And I recorded eight songs. Lip Loss was one of the songs. Mm -hmm. When we got back to New York, DJ Enough already been down, like not down, but he wrote, he, he was a ride, he's a ride or die DJ. He love underground. He love real music. And he he's one of the DJs that's never, never afraid to promote something new. Some people, they need the industry to be like, oh, here, you need to play these songs mm -hmm. this week. Oh, you need, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or here, here's a couple of dollars for this. He's not like that. He already, he already put it out on the table. He's like, I don't care about no money. I don't care about nothing. I will play a record if it's hot. Mm -hmm. He told me that when I was 13 and I was in, riding around the Empire Skating Ring. And I was like, yo, you know, promote mm -hmm. my music in there. He said, when it's hot, I got you, man. They're not going to take you serious till you turn about 16 because they know you still want to enjoy your childhood. They've been there and done that with artists before, and they're not trying, really trying to do that right now. Mm -hmm. So when I came to DJ Enough with my CD from Atlanta, he played my record immediately. And it was just a run into him. It was like he invited us to a free concert that they had for the fans, giving back. He invited me to that. And when I went to pick up the tickets... I gave him the CD. He said, I'm playing this tomorrow. Next thing you know, it's on the radio. He played the record. <laughs> and one of the things that I respect the most, like out of everything, like before I could respect this record label that I'm signed to, Job Records, mm -hmm. before I could respect my fans, before I could respect anybody, I respect DJ enough for taking the chance mm -hmm. of playing my record, for pushing it to other DJs all over. Like, play this, this record is hot. Like, that's love. Mm -hmm. That's that's truly love, and I and I respect him for that. So after after that, you know, people started calling Snow in, trying things. to get in touch. Like, oh, who's, who, who's the artist? Who's this girl that made the song? Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody's trying to you know hustle, see where they could get in, see where they could fit in. Yeah. You had Jive Records, <laughs> you had um, Swiss Beats and his Peoples, et cetera, et cetera. You had different like, but these are two of the people that for sure, for sure, I was in the studio with hanging around trying to see what we were going to do, how we were going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And finally, I signed to Jive Records, um, a and Dave Lighty. And uh, from then on out, everything just started to push forward. So how much um, creative control are you getting with this album? Are, are you being dictated to it all? When it comes to like press, certain contacts that Jive Records have, like my, my record label has is like, they they helping me out. It's mm -hmm. like this is my album. I wrote my album, so they're helping me to push my project. It's like if you write a book, mm -hmm. I can tell you, girl, we got this lined up for you. We got that lined up for you. You're gonna do you, mm -hmm. but I just have it here for you. So do your thing, and I'm happy that they did provide that for me. You know what I'm saying? Much respect to Jive Records for sure. Respect to my label for me, Faces. I gotta respect them. They they built me up. They they are the foundation, and they are still here today. You gotta respect that. And bringing that in is something that I would ask for, but I just don't have to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Being able to do 106 in Park, being able to do BT, MTV, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So you had a, a bittersweet year. Would, would you say that you mm -hmm. had a bittersweet year? It's been long. Yeah. How is it that, um, you know, you went through something very difficult 
in your life and you're still able to maintain you know your energetic fun personality you going out there you're working you mm -hmm. know you're still holding it together even though you went through something that was so hard how did you get through that Luhana you know uh, when you got your family behind beside you for sure like family is made up of so many different people you have people that love you so much they hate you you have people that are on top of you and they seem like they hate you but they love you the most tough love you have people whose love is so obvious because they're so genuine and sweet that it's just it's embrace of it's like oh I love you and it's not phony everything that he's saying is like me like I, I communicate with my family so you gotta look to your children because they will teach you things that remind you of your past and they will bring things to your attention that are new that you know nothing about mm -hmm. and it's similar to things that you've been through but it's just a new breed and, you, and, and it's, it's fresh <clears throat> and it's real and you deal with it and you show them a, an alternative which is the old way mm -hmm. and let them work through it you know what I mean because I, I went through different challenges where I was like in school and people would be like, oh, you dirty, ew, you got braids. And like everybody else had perms. So it was like, ew, like they'll make fun of you. And your mother will be like, girl, you all right. You don't got to worry about that. But then you're like, ma, but I do got to worry about it. I got to go to school tomorrow. They still going to tease me. Like, mm -hmm. still, my mother taught me about jealousy. And she taught me about other, like how, she taught me about how other people might not understand your situation. And they just feed off of what they already know. This child comes from another household where their parents believe in perms. They believe in young girls, like, being into grown women things. And mm -hmm. I come from a household where it's like, be yourself, natural beauty. And, you know, it's like a conflict of interest. But I learned to work through it mm -hmm. by taking her advice, taking my brother's advice, going through the actual situation or whatnot, and just growing from it. So when you ask me, how do I get through Basically, all of these problems that I've went through in the past year, like losing my mother, that was a major down, down, down for me in my life. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's just the way I feel. Like it was a, it was a downer for me to lose my mother. But I've lost my grandmother before. We love my grandmother. She was official tissue. Her and my mother was close. And when we lost my grandmother, my mother was very strong about that. She kept going. She didn't stay in the house. She didn't weed. Nothing. She kept working hard. And like, I'm a reflection of my mother. So I work, and I keep going. And, and I just keep keep my head on my shoulders. And everything that she's ever taught me to get by in life, I pass that on to the next generation. Because they need me, just like I need her. I can't give up on somebody. Because what if she gave up on me? I was in junior high school, and I lost my grandmother. My mother would've gave up on me. My father would've, it was my father's mother. But my mom and her, they were very close. So if she would've gave up on me, then what? You know what I mean? I think about stuff like that. And I'm here for these kids. And they're only my brothers and sisters. They're not my kids. But I love them. Truly. Well, that's amazing. Oh, you're making me teary-eyed. Okay. Um. <laughs> he loves <it. laughs>